everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and today I'm showing you how to make keto bread. I have lots of low carb bread recipes on my website, but this one is my absolute favorite. It's light and fluffy, it's just like those pre-sliced loaves you get at the grocery store, and I think that's why this has been the most popular bread recipe on the blog for several years now. Aside from the amazing texture, the other great thing about this keto bread recipe is that it uses super simple ingredients. In fact, you only need five ingredients to make this, plus salt. But there are a couple optional add-ins that I recommend that I'll cover in this video to make this the best keto bread you've ever had. We're using a blend of two flours here, wholesome yum almond flour and wholesome yum coconut flour. Using this blend of flours gives this bread the best texture and please, please don't make the mistake of substituting one for the other. It's not gonna work. Your batter is gonna be either too wet or too dry. These flours also have the finest consistency and the right moisture level for this recipe. Plus, you might as well pick up a bag of each of these to use in all your keto baking recipes. These flours are super versatile. You can get these on my website or on Amazon. I'll link both down below so you'll know exactly where to find them. Okay, so one more thing. I know I said you need just five ingredients and that's fine if that's all you use, but if you want this to be the best keto bread recipe, there's a couple optional add-ins that I'm going to show you as I make this so that you get the absolute best result. If you love keto baking recipes like this, ones that are super simple, have just a few ingredients, be sure you subscribe, that way you'll be notified as soon as I post more of these. But for now, we're making keto bread. Let's do this. We're going to start by lining our loaf pan. You're gonna use a loaf pan that's about eight by four inches or eight and a half by four and a half. And so we're gonna get a piece of parchment paper that's a little bit bigger than both the bottom of the pan and the sides combined. So just kind of check on the sides here to make sure that it's the right size, cut off any extra. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other sides here. Cut off any extra so that this is the perfect size and the only thing we have left to deal with are the corners. So here's my little trick here. You're gonna arrange the parchment paper over the pan and just cut out where the corners are going to be. And then flip it over and it'll fit right in. You're not gonna have any bunching in the corners. Look at that. Now we're going to measure our butter. So for this keto bread recipe, you're going to need a third of a cup of butter. That's five tablespoons plus one teaspoon. You'll notice the stick of butter has these notches on it. So you'll count five notches plus one third of the sixth notch that's gonna get you a third of a cup total. And then you can just unwrap it from the foil and cut it into pieces, that way it's going to melt faster. And I'm gonna transfer this to a bowl so that I can microwave it to melt. If you like, you can melt on the stove top instead, up to you. I don't need this anymore. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and melt this. What looks like magic on video. And we're gonna set that aside. And now we are going to get a food processor. I like this 14 cup food processor because it's going to fit a lot in there. So we're going to add one cup of wholesome yum blanched almond flour. And a quarter cup of wholesome yum coconut flour. Again, this flour combination is going to give us that really good texture and the coconut flour tends to stick, so be sure you get it all out of your bowl or measuring cup. Now we're going to add two teaspoons of baking powder. This is going to help give our bread lift. Make sure you don't mix it up with baking soda. And a tablespoon of Bestie. This bread is not sweet, so we're using just a tablespoon, but it does balance out the saltiness. And we just added a quarter teaspoon of salt in there as well. Now I'm going to add one of the optional ingredients a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. This is going to give us that chewy texture. It's gonna help the bread stay together, but if you like, you can skip it. And we're gonna pulse all those ingredients in the food processor until they're nice and uniform. And now we're gonna add the melted butter in there. If you like, coconut oil is also a fine substitute for the butter, so feel free to swap that out if you like for a dairy-free option. And we're gonna pulse that again until we get this kind of crumbly texture. Watch for ingredients sticking to the side of the food processor, so just use a spatula to get any of those off. And we're going to set this aside for now, and we are going to whip our egg whites. 
So the first thing we're gonna need to do is separate the eggs. Make sure your eggs are at room temperature. This is going to do a couple of things. First of all, it's going to make the egg whites easier to whip. That is going to give us really stiff peaks, which is what we're gonna want. And then also it's going to mix correctly with the other ingredients in the bread dough so that the butter in there doesn't solidify. You want room temperature eggs. And my little trick for doing that is put them into warm water and they will warm up to room temperature really quickly. So you'll notice I'm separating the eggs. I'm not using any special equipment here. All I do is crack an egg and then keep the yolk in the shell and kind of move the yolk between the two halves of the shell until all the whites fall down into the large bowl below. And then you can just place the yolks into a separate bowl. You're not going to need them for this low carb bread recipe, but I do have other recipes where you can use them. So I'll link some of those down below for you. Separate all the eggs, be careful about any shells falling into the egg whites, and also be very careful to avoid any yolk falling into the whites because the whites will not be to stiff peaks if you do. If you get any yolk in there, you're gonna have to fish it out, but even then it's a little risky, so it's really better just to avoid that problem. So we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar to the egg whites. That's gonna help them whip a little bit more easily. And then we're gonna attach a whisk attachment to a hand mixer. I highly recommend the whisk attachment instead of the beaters because it's going to create more air and you're going to get a better result. Plus, you'll get those stiff peaks much more quickly. And with this large amount of egg whites, trust me, you want to save that extra time. This takes a while as it is. So the egg whites are going to start out clear and then they're gonna start to get kind of frothy. And I like to start at kind of a low to medium low speed. And then once you get that frothy texture, then you can increase the speed to about medium high or so if your mixer has multiple settings. If not, it's totally fine. It'll still work, but this method is just kind of the most effective. And then you're gonna get soft peaks first. And then if you just keep going, eventually you're gonna see these streaks. And if you hold up the whisk, you'll notice that the egg whites will kind of like stand up. Um, they'll be very stiff. That's how you know that they're ready, aside from the streaks. Another way to know they're ready is to tilt the bowl over. Just do this carefully. They should not fall out. That's how you know that you have peaks that are stiff enough. So now we're going to add half of this egg white mixture to the food processor. We need to be really careful not to break down the egg whites. This is what's going to give us those nice air pockets and that fluffy texture in our keto white bread. So it's important that those egg whites stay at least partially intact. We're going to pulse. That means starting and stopping in the food processor until this is just combined, but be careful not to over mix so we don't get rid of all the air pockets. And now we're going to transfer that mixture into the bowl with the remaining egg whites and we're going to fold very gently. Make sure that you use a folding motion. Don't just stir or you're gonna break down all those air pockets, but just keep going until no streaks remain. It's important that you don't see any more streaks, otherwise you're gonna have clumps of almond flour and clumps of egg white in your bread, and that is not going to taste good. You want it to be completely uniform, but try not to break down those air pockets. Time to transfer our keto bread batter into the loaf pan. Again, be gentle with it and just kind of scoop it all in there. It shouldn't be totally runny. If it's runny, then you broke down the egg whites too much, but it's not really stiff either. It's kind of fluffy. And we're gonna smooth the top. I like to round the top a little bit so that our bread is going to be rounded when it bakes because it's not going to rise a whole lot in the oven. Time to bake. We're using a lower oven temperature, 325 degrees, because this bread is gonna take a while to cook through. So we're gonna bake for 40 minutes at first until the top is golden brown, and then we're gonna tent the top with foil and bake for another 30 to 45 minutes until the top is firm and it doesn't make a squishy sound when pressed. Keep in mind that the toothpick test does not work very well with this bread because it's going to pass the toothpick test before it's actually done, and if you take it out too early, the bread is going to collapse. Nobody wants that. So just use your finger to check, make sure there's no squishy sound. And if you want to also check with a toothpick just to be safe, you can. But overall, the baking time is over an hour, including that time tented with foil. And then once you take it out of the oven, be sure you let it cool on a cooling rack, peel away the parchment paper, 
so that it doesn't get too wet and let it cool completely before you slice it. My bread is finally cooled and I'm so excited to cut into this. Use a bread knife and here we go. Look at that. I love how light and fluffy this is. I love those air pockets. This is always the challenge with keto breads, getting those air pockets. And so I'm always so excited when we get these right. You can use this keto white bread for just about anything. It's perfect for any application where a really soft bread would be really nice. So it's great for sandwiches, it's great for toast, you can even make French toast out of it. I'm gonna keep it super simple and just make a turkey sandwich here. Okay, let's try this. That was so good. So light and fluffy, so airy, tastes just like a white bread. This reminds me of the sandwiches I used to have in my childhood. What about you? What foods from your childhood do you miss the most? Tell me in the comments below. I'll try to make healthy versions of them for you. I hope you'll make this keto bread soon. If you do, be sure to snap a photo post with hashtag wholesome yum so that I can see it. See you next time on Wholesome Yum, where I share easy, healthy, and keto recipes all of 10 ingredients or less.